Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Some Ordinary Podcast. This is your host, Mudahar. I got my co-host, Nuxtaku. Oompaville is in Texas right now in the middle of his landlines being absolutely mauled. So he might join in the middle. He might not. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if he's even alive at the end of this episode. But of course, to talk about aliens today, we've got our friend Keem. I'm excited <laughs> going, to be here. You know, you hit me up and you're like, uh, yo, can you do the podcast? I'm like, always. I'm always down. And you're like, we're talking about UFOs. Oh, I'm going to be there. <laughs> be there. No, dude. Dude, honestly, like uh, the last two weeks have been so massive because um, mm-hmm. so anybody, obviously, I think most people watching uh, us know that UFOs, like that this whole UFO story, um, for the last like few weeks every day the u.s government or the canadian government or the russians or the chinese have been shooting down a f-ing ufo in some part of the world every day yeah <laughs> and at this point i don't listen i firmly believe aliens are real i, I know at some point we're going to get first contact while this might not be it i i want to see <laughs> aliens at some point in my f-ing life <laughs> what do you think I, I totally agree. I totally agree. I mean, in this case, it's not it. You know, you're dealing with some type of, like, uh, spy craft. Um, but yeah. there's mixed reporting, right? So you have the first incident, which is the Chinese um, spy, spy balloon. balloon. Uh, February 4th, we shoot it down off the <laughs> East Coast. And then you have the thing that we shot down in Alaska, which is, like, six days later on February 10th, I believe. And mm. there's re- a report that CNN did where they were saying that the pilots said that their instruments were getting messed up when they were near it. That is like, when you hear that stuff, that's the same stuff that you hear with like actually like alien type UFO type stuff is that anytime that you're near uh, their technology, that your instruments don't work and whatnot. Uh, But then you're also hearing um, from the government that these were all balloons, just different style balloons. So it's really confusing. Um, They did come out later and said that they don't think that there's any evidence that these are, you know, from out of this world type shit. So it's weird how um, we're getting all these mixed messages in the Chinese spy balloon. We got pictures of them bringing it up out of the water. Thing in Alaska, we don't have any pictures of that. Thing in Canada, we don't have any pictures of that. The thing that was shot mm-hmm. over Lake Huron, we have no images of that. Why? Yeah. Well, the other thing that I found weird, too, was uh, the Canadian, I think it was a Canadian defense uh, minister, uh, who was like, they, they they were about to say balloon, and then they were just like, no, 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 it's a cylindrical object or something, and that's what it came out to. So, look, I... I'm going to sound like a conspiracy nut, but it sounds like a fucking escape pod. You know what I mean? Like alien craft <laughs> escape pod landing in almost. But it's right. Like when there's like communications issues or there's something, maybe it has a lot to do with the fact that where it crashed isn't too great for communications. Like the mountains in the middle of, you know, Alaska could be. I'll be the contrarian. But. I don't think humanity will ever make contact with aliens. Why is that? The way I see it, um, I could totally be wrong here, obviously. Um, there is a finite amount of years that humanity will be able to exist, all right? Like, let, let's take all, like, religious talk out of it. At some point, the sun's going to blow up and we're all going to be dead, right? At some right. point. So, in a case where time is infinite, right, and it'll just keep going whether humanity is there or not, I'm, I don't want to get into quantum physics talking about how time only exists while there is a conscious mind that observes time. Like, mm-hmm. but... Put, putting that aside, time is going to keep going on forever. Maybe there's going to be life somewhere else at some point. I'm not saying that aliens don't exist because the universe is so massive and constantly expanding. Mm-hmm. But I think the chances are so minute that contact will actually be made, even if they do exist. And even if they are a life form similar enough to humanity to actually have some sort of conversation... I'll go further and say I just don't think it'll ever happen. You can't say that, like, the world is so big, the universe is so big, time is infinite, um, but the chances of us, like, you know, uh, having another life form is rare, and you doubt that that's going to happen. It's like, what? Bro, this thing is so big, time is so big. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that another life form doesn't exist. It it might. I'm just saying I don't think we'll ever make contact. That, that's what I said. Well, do you think humanity is going to blow the, ourselves up but, or something but, before we even reach but space? You're, then you're all? also saying yeah. that if we're never going to make contact, then the chances 
of uh, an advanced life form from a different fucking planet uh, meeting us are slim to none. That's what you're saying. That is what I'm saying. Yes. But the universe is massive, right? Correct. There's yes, so many yes. different possibilities. So, of course, there has to be some type of you know advanced civilization that can reach us based on the amount of how big it is and how many possibilities and how many planets and how many stars, how many galaxies. You know, I think what he's uh, I think what he's saying is we might not be alive long enough to reach that era where we're able to like space fair and like see other people. You know, um, maybe. I think we I will. Know, is that... Maybe. I mean, I don't I think, think it'll will. happen in any of our lifetimes, regardless. Well, but... I know that in our lifetime, it's a very small possibility that aliens show up. As sad as it sounds, like, I don't want to fucking... But, like, at some point, like, two, three hundred years from now, I don't expect that we won't be able to come across some intelligent life, if not be able to get off Earth and, like, explore our fucking world around us. See, I know? agree with <laughs> off-Earth, explore world around us, and I agree with potentially mm-hmm. even finding some sort of life. I just don't know if we would find life that we would, you know, quantify as sentient. Okay. Uh, they've already been here. But before we go <laughs> deep into that rabbit hole, right. can I just say how disappointed I am in... Um, like our military and whatnot, because think about it. There are balloons, right, with satellites on them. We know that from the very first one, that that's exactly what that thing was. And they had to shoot it down. We're we're giving trillions and trillions (laughs) and trillions of dollars to the Defense Department, all right? Like every every year, right? There's nine trillion dollars that is unaccountable for that we gave to the military, right? Nine trillion to the Pentagon. Mm-hmm. Nine trillion. They can't. They don't even know where it went. They can't find it, dude. Um, well, because each of those fucking missiles costs like four hundred thousand dollars, so the money just goes to like Raytheon and like a bunch of these our other entire, you know, I our think entire team, U.S. I economy, you. our entire U.S. economy is fifteen trillion, and nine trillion is missing that we send these that we give these motherfuckers. So you mean to tell me, right, that they haven't developed some type of like net with a time release of a parachute to go in and capture the device so it safely lands to the ground. They haven't invented this to capture things out of the air to Unless bring them safely to the, the ground. Evidence. We got to shoot them down like fucking cavemen. What are we fucking cavemen? <laughs> we shoot the thing down and then it crashes <laughs> and destroys. We don't have any technology to capture this thing and safely land it to the ground. That is fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dude, I, I almost, to be fair I almost, though, yeah, like, I agree. <laughs> almost, looking at this rationally though, why does the government have all these secrets, right? You'd think that if we're paying for all this stuff, because it's our tax money that's going there, right? Like you'd think mm-hmm. that we have the right to know what's on, you know, Area Fifty One okay. and stuff. Now like hold that. on, hold on a minute, hold on. There's there's also a counterpoint to what Keem said too, and also what you said as well. So when it comes to like taking, de- I think the reason. So the way that I've seen it discussed is they used a four hundred thousand dollar missile, the Sidewinder, right? Like they fired it at the balloon, so that they couldn't give away military secrets if it was actually spying. Which makes sense, right? Like imagine if somebody like sent a spy balloon. Are you going to use like your hidden tech just out of Dude, nowhere? Or are you going to keep that for a rainy not day? Tech, okay, bro. That's okay, all he's if nobody. If nobody f-ing else has a net gun with a parachute, okay, come on, why bro. would you just tell people Dude, that you have it first? I, I'm going to make a billion dollars, all right? As soon as we're done with this podcast, I'm going to go on my computer and I'm going to develop a fucking net, right? It has little weights on it. The weights are in a bullet. It's a time release. It shoots. The fucking weights spread. A net is attached behind it. It captures the, the, the payload of the device, right? Then mm-hmm. once you do that, it releases like needles or a little BB gun or whatever to hit the balloon, right? Now it's free falling, has a time release. It realizes that like, you know, that it's moving fast down, right? It has a thing that shows like your altitude. So now that it knows that it's falling, it releases a parachute, safely puts it on the fucking ground. So we, you know what I'm saying? How do we not have this technology? Yeah, that, that's not something I, so mind blowing that other countries are going to steal parachutes. I'm just, net I'm, guns. Just, I'm just saying if no, if no other country has used it, that means it's like your special tech. Yeah, because it's too dumb to invent. Like, <laughs> not anymore. We <laughs> obviously anymore. need this shit. Oh, they're, like, to be... they're like, the, the thing that they shot in Alaska, right? They're like, oh, we're going to send divers, yeah. but I don't know, weather permitting and da 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 Well, if you would have hit it with a net and put it on a parachute, 
Shit, you could have just yeah, scooped like that a, thing up. Dude, every yeah, bad shot guy in every cartoon has what we need. They all have those net guns with the little weights yeah, at the know, end. you know, actually, you guys are completely fucking right. I've seen this in so many James Bond spy movies. It's like, why the f*** don't we actually have, like, net rockets silly. or something? Like, Unless they were destroying the evidence. Where the f*** is this money going? Like, we don't have well, that? What? Well, the the weird thing about it, too, is, like, so this UFO stuff conveniently happens around the time of, like, this Ohio train derailment. So I don't know if you guys have been following Ooh. this one, but... This Ohio train derailment is wild. Every photo that I've seen come out of it is, like, something out of, like, some biblical horror story. Yeah. Like, there was this one shot that I saw where, like, they had this black cloud of smoke going directly up, and it was just, like, it turned the surrounding area of, like, what was it, like, East Palestine, and it just, like, this... It was just dark. Like, that's all it was. It was dark. Place smells like crap. There was, like, wildlife that was dead. One reporter got arrested because they were apparently trespassing, which is beyond insane to me yeah so it's like all of this is happening while that train derailment is going on and somehow um, uh, aside from like twitter and like people tweeting about it i haven't really seen too much coverage on this personally like it's not a bigger deal than it needs to be at least in my opinion yeah i mean they decided to nuke a town to get the railroad up and going again like instead of taking your time and like you know, getting the smartest people in the room down for a meeting, like, what do we do? How do we do? How do we do this? How do we contain this? Now, the mm. counterpoint to that is, from what I heard, is in the 90s, something similar happened. And basically, the chemical that was inside the, the train cars, um, if it is slowly leaking, it will like explode right and so you'll have shrapnel you'll have a, a way yeah. bigger bomb right that would um completely level the entire town in which we're talking about that got evacuated so uh, i guess the counter argument to that is that this was a controlled explosion uh that yeah. would have less of an effect on the people um I mean, at the end of the day, it's a shitty situation, so it's like, how do we make the situation just less shittier, right? Like, it could either, like, if you know that, like, 100,000 people are going to get fucking injured, or, like, 1,000 people, like, yeah, both options are shit, but you're just going to immediately go with the 1,000, you know, people getting injured over the 100, obviously. Well, they were saying that they, they, they sent the people back, they evacuated people in the town, right, in, like, a two-mile mm. radius, which most people said, hey, it should have been, like, 30 miles, right? Um, yeah. And they let them come back to their house before they tested the air quality, the water quality, before they tested anything. They're like, oh, you can go back to your house now. And, you know, <laughs> some people came back to their home and had chickens. All the chickens are dead. You know, dogs are yeah, dying. I saw a photo of it. Pets are sick. If you go to the rivers nearby, all the fish are dead. I mean, th we nuked this town. And they're telling them, yeah, you can go back. Like, what? What is happening? Well, it's, it's kind of because like that one problem is so bad that it's affecting my like city now like where i live in canada because the water feeds into the like it feeds into the falls so like if you if you're getting the water from niagara falls like people who live in buffalo and you've got people who live at niagara falls ontario and then all the way up to like hamilton where i live are just kind of like yeah but you're upstream <laughs> you're upstream yeah so you don't have to really worry about it because it'll all go south it won't go it won't go north um yeah. And thank God, like, you know, where I live, I'm north of it. Um, so even with the wind blowing this this gas to from west to east, like the people of the east are kind of with the air quality and water um, people are affect south yeah. of that. So I, we're relatively safe, but like a big part of the country is not <laughs> like this is like uh, the amount of gallons of this chemical, I don't remember exactly, but when you hear the number of gallons of this chemical and how much can actually, I think like a gallon can do damage to like a big population. And there was gallons and gallons and gallons of this stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Whatever, dude, whatever they were. And, and the funny thing is the more I look into it, like right now, it's like, we didn't even know everything that was on it. Cause apparently it wasn't even all reported and accounted for. So it's just like a fucking shit show, man. Like now, this is what I worry about, right? So we have a spy okay. balloons going on. I'm sure you've heard stories about how um, since like 2012, uh, 
you know the uh, the power stations, the sublet power stations for our, our electric in the United States have been like mm -hmm. terrorized. Like there's been so many incidents where like people go there with like an AK and just shoot the thing and power shuts down for like an entire town for like four hours. This is nonstop happening um, for years and years in, um, in America. And it's happened a lot recently. So you have that thing going on. And now you had the train derailment in uh, East Palestine. You had one in Houston, which had toxic chemicals as well. And then you had one, I believe, in South Carolina. This all just happened within the last fucking week that there was three different trail train um, derailments where toxic shit was getting released. Then last night, I believe somewhere in Texas, a truck was carrying some toxic shit and that fell over. I think over. that was, uh, yeah, that was like, I think it was Arizona. Yeah, because they fell over Arizona, and got like okay. orange like dust, yeah. And it's like, what is happening? Like, is this, you know, domestic terrorism? Because like, this is fucking wild that it's all happening in such a condensed amount of time. Palestine yeah, moment, it's... am I right? <laughs> yeah, for real. No, but like, the thing is, it's like, you're right. Like, it's, it's happened, like, it's like, as soon as 2023, like the clock switched over, like, shit just accelerated, because this is like... Th honestly, dude, this decade is probably one of the wild... They're, they're going to talk about the 2020s in, like, the 60s, the 2060s, the 2070s. Dude, it's I like think the every like... decade is just going to get crazier <laughs> from here on out. Like, technology continues to advance at a faster and faster rate. I think yeah. every decade will be the new craziest decade in history. Well, you got to remember, like, if you know anything about history, like, in the Until 70s, like... III. In the 70s, people were, like, bombing each other, like, like in the country. They were, like, yeah. they would mail each other bombs. They would there were, there were car bombs. Like, that was, like, a big thing in the 70s. That happened all the time with these mobsters and the fucking Teamsters and, mm -hmm. and Jimmy Hoffa went missing. You know, you had the fucking Irish um, and, uh, I don't know. Over in Ireland, they had a big fucking fight. Yeah, the, I, yeah, the IRA and the Brits uh, exactly. fighting against each other. Yeah. Bombing each other and stuff. So there was mm -hmm. crazy stuff, like, you know, back in the day as well. You had, like, Colombian drug bosses bombing their government buildings because they were fucking getting arrested. Yeah. No, that like, you're right. Like, each decade is wild. But I think, like, it's, it's also a bit of a bias from, like, us because we're getting older to the point where we're, like, perceiving more of the, like, news around us. So maybe for us, like, the 2020s yeah. are now going to be super-duper wild. I mean, literally the other day. So it's, like, a little bit derailing on the situation. Like, you know the term fake news. We all know, like, misinformation. Yeah. Obviously, have you guys seen that Joe Rogan clip where, like, he was advertising that f***ing one product, like, somebody deep faked it? Oh, that's wild. No. <laughs> so, you didn't see that? So, okay, uh, Coffee and then Hassan Piker's editor, like, they posted, like, this AI um, deep fake of Joe Rogan on his podcast, and, like, they cut to this Amazon product, and they were selling this, am like, they made Joe Rogan advertise for this product, through deep fake AI, oh and they just God. posted it on TikTok, and so like because of that, Joe Rogan was running around DMCAing everyone for that clip, because obviously like it the the way that it sounded. So I've heard voice cloning technology before, dude. I've been playing around with it like six seven years ago. Shit was a joke. It sounded like a monotone robot. Yeah, it was but not now, good, but it's it was scary good. Yeah, it was not good. But if you're on TikTok. And part of that clip um, airs and not the full thing, because the longer it goes, the more you know it's fake, right? Yeah. If part of that clip goes, um, you're going to fall for it. I, I, Dude, I go on TikTok from time to time. I have to do it for drama, et cetera, et cetera. And I always get targeted ads sent to me. And because mm -hmm. I listen to joe rogan watch the joe rogan podcast and because you know the chinese and tiktok are spying on me 24 7 like watching me poo and shit um True. i'm scrolling through t tiktok and um i get a, an ad for some type of vitamin or something off the joe rogan podcast and i didn't think anything of it until this clip from coffeezilla and them showing this you know deep fake stuff maybe that ad that's on tiktok now is fake I should investigate it because there's somebody on the Joe Rogan podcast saying, yeah, I take this vitamin and that vitamin and then they're promoting the vitamin. And I'm like, maybe that wasn't even fucking real. Well, like, yeah, it's like the longer you obviously listen to a deep fake, the more quickly you'll figure it out. But that's only if you know what you're looking yeah. for. Like, uh, like I, I saw a clip of Biden, you, you know, the, the Pokemon copy pasta meme, like the, the Vaporeon thing. Vaporeon yeah, yeah, is yeah. the most breedable Pokemon. Like there was a, uh, a clip of 
Biden talking about that, like with the deep fake technology and the voice and everything, it sounded like Biden wanted to have sex with a Pokemon. <laughs> like, it did. Yeah. Yeah, but like the thing is, unless they're saying something super outlandish, like you I saw the same it. thing with Trump. You, you don't believe it, but like if he was like talking about, like, could you imagine if like they deep fake Biden into like fucking escalating shit with like another country, or, like starting <laughs> I was, shit? Literally what I was just thinking. Literally what I was just thinking. Yeah, like, like imagine if like imagine just, just like think for for a second, right? Like, like somebody deep fakes some Russian like commanders talking about like launching a nuclear bomb. On like a, a Soviet bloc, like a like Ukraine or something, and they just like leaked it, and it sounded super duper convincing. And the thing and, like, is, the U.S. military got a hold of and, it. They'd be like, "What?" And the thing is, behind the scenes, right? You'd have yeah. these two governments, right, um, on their channels communicating. Are you really attacking us right now? No, of course we're not. Like they're not going to believe that. Like if you're being attacked, mm. they're not going to tell you that we're attacking you. So the amount of yeah. fucking like Bro. stress that's probably happening with our intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, department uh in this country it, it must be insane trying to figure out what the the truth is it's also interesting because in the online world um you know copyright law is a disaster right they're they're completely yeah. off base with all forms of copyright law um like mm -hmm. there's a a vtuber news channel that just got 20 copyright strikes in a day from a vtuber organization that didn't like the drama like that he was reporting on the drama so oh, he, so they issued false strikes. The, false yeah. strikes, and he's trying to get his yeah. channel back. Like, it's going to get terminated. But anyway, like, mm -hmm. so that goes on. I wonder if deepfake stuff is going to make them actually, uh, like, upgrade the guidelines on what copyright is. Because technically, Dude, I, by the way the guidelines look right now, there's yeah. no reason you should be able to copyright take down deepfake. It's original content. I mean, it's transformative. Yeah. The thing with the deepfake stuff is, like, so the way that I always look at politics, it's, like, unless it affects the old f that run the government, they they never touch it. Like, they never bother with it, right? But so it's this, like, this literally affects the government so this much. Do, it does. Because, like like I said, imagine if, like, we're two... Imagine if, like, okay, Keem is the Russians and I'm the Americans, right? Like, Keem is... Akeem is not looking to nuke anybody, but I'm an American, like, and like, leader, and I've been, like, just sent this deep fake of, like, Keem and, like, all the Russian guys talking about nuking people. You think I'm going to sit there and, like, hey, guys, throw it into an AI and figure out if it's a deep fake or, oh, shit, maybe we should retaliate because it sounds really fucking serious. Because you're right, like, they're, like, no matter what you want to say about, like, a three-letter, like, you know, CIA and, like, the FBI and the NSA, it's like, bro, the amount of work they have to be doing right now to ensure that things are legitimate or not must be insane. Because, like, the deep fake technology we have access to is nowhere near as complicated as whatever the government has access to, right? Because you know they're using the shit on a daily basis against other, you know, people out there, you know? I got a better one for you. All right, you have Project Veritas, right? Who's um, like going undercover, like, you know, recording people like this Pfizer mm -hmm. thing was huge. Right. Uh, long story. Yeah. But was that real, though? Like, I got to I got to counter you on that one. Was that real? It, by by every measure, it seems real. Yeah. It was like, you know, this guy really did yeah, but, say that stuff. He really did work for Pfizer. Yeah. But did he really, though? Because I looked into that so hard and I could not find him as like global head of research. Like, even if I was way back machining and everything, which I did, because I was. Because remember when this happened, they came like, out with. I looked at it. They ca they came out with some documents um, proving that he was an employee. Project Veritas did. Um, but anyhow, my my point isn't to actually talk about this, right? Um, oh, right. I'm bringing it back to the to the deep fake stuff, right? So, mm -hmm. long story short, to give you the cliff notes on this, um, you know, there there's a gay guy who allegedly works at Pfizer, um, and Project Veritas is a news organization that goes undercover. He the the employee thinks that he's on a date, and the date is asking him a bunch of questions, and he's talking about. Um, you know, mutating the COVID virus and all this other stuff um, for their own personal gains so they can make new drugs for it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, I think the problem with deep, deep fake in the future is, okay, let's say all this is a thousand percent true and I haven't seen evid any evidence that it's fake. What if Pfizer or that employee comes out and says, this never happened. This is a deep fake, right? So it goes both ways, right? Like you would have a scenario mm -hmm. where people can fake shit, but then you also could have a scenario where stuff is a hundred percent real. And the yeah. people that are being exposed are like, 
this isn't true. I never said any of this. This entire video is fake. It's a deep fake, right? So it goes both ways of us just being completely lost in the future and not having any idea what the f is actually well, happening. I feel like as that, we stand, that's... we have like the original footage, right? Like I, the original footage can't be a deep fake. I think. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. With like how fucking crazy AI backgrounds and how crazy AI stuff has gotten. It, it is crazy advanced, but like even yeah. today, like how often do you see yeah. fake Discord messages, right? You see someone get into drama or whatever over like creepy Discord texts, and he's yeah. like, oh, it's fake. It's almost never fake. Like, it's almost never yeah. fake. Well, like, uh, it's easy to prove them, because if you have a video, you can refresh off of the server, yeah. right? But yeah. it's like, you know, like, the, th the thing with any visual evidence like that is, like, obviously, like, Keem, you, all of us have probably looked at a weird Discord server at time from time, right? Like, for various different reasons. And proving it can be tough, yes, but, like... I, I have a rule for that. Like, if there, if I can, if I sign into the server myself and refresh, and the messages are there, then I'll believe it. But if it's like in a video or like you send me a screenshot, I'm not believing any of that until I see it with my own eyes. Yeah, and that's that. That's where it goes. And the same thing goes with this kind of content too, right? Like, if I watch a video on the internet of a deep fake, like now I've pretty much said, like, unless I see something with my own two eyes in, in real life, I'm not going to believe it. You know, like, when, you could, like that's the thing with videos and stuff today. When but. there's screenshots in like a drama art story of someone did this or someone said that and stuff, I let whoever's alleging this happen. Uh, tell their story and I let whoever's you know the person getting exposed to tell their story right if there ever comes a situation of like it's fake or not I'm not going to be the fucking judge because shit can be faked you know the the audience is the judge if, if this shit is real or not you know if if the accuser is getting pushed back then can make a video of you refreshing do all that shit you know mm -hmm. um, but that scenario comes off uh, off like really rarely most of the time that you see these leaked screenshots it's they're real, real. Yeah. but somebody put out a fake tweet on reddit of me saying like I like younger girls because they're easy to manipulate or some some dumb shit like that and this shit went fucking super viral it was like a fake fucking tweet that someone made that supposedly I tweeted I never tweeted this and it went stupid viral it was all over reddit it was it was on TikToks and shit, I had to literally come out and be like, guys, this is not real. Like, I've never tweeted this ever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that happened to me personally. That's rough. The, the thing the thing that's like, so you recently Can covered I this up real quick. I'm sorry. Guy. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> I think the biggest problem with like the, the deep fake stuff now is like a lot of these allegations that are coming out, like what that said, the programmer guy and like. Shit, even the even like Logan Paul and like Crypto Zoo and like a lot of these things, it's like to some extent. Okay, forget the Logan Paul; that was a bad addition. But like, imagine with Seth, it's like he could just easily say like all of his shit was deep fake. He or did something, do that, right? Oh, yeah. okay. yo, yo, Seth did say that it was fake. That was the wild part. He had fifty-eight pages of exposed stuff on him, and he was like, "Yeah, man, it's all fake, out of context satire." Oh, Seth, like, the was... programmer. Yeah. Yeah, the but, <laughs> but then I had to, um, or the programmer, excuse me. But then I, I had to. Pro groomer, did you see bad. the seven hour stream I did with him? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, on the so camera. Like, I, yeah. I kept getting tagged because I was friends with that whole group like years ago. Clyde, mm -hmm. Seth, Swag, like I was friends with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was a weird situation for me. So I had to just hold him to the fire. Um, but with the deep fake stuff, we can bring it back to the UFO. It's like, um, scenario. It's like, dude. Every time we're seeing UFO videos and clips online, like a big portion of these are fake. They're not real. They're mm -hmm. like edited, you know, like, dude, it's, it's hard to know what is in real anymore. You know, there's documentaries with like so-called Bigfoot and they've seen Bigfoot and they've recorded Bigfoot. There's documentaries where the guy's in the fucking woods, right? And he's zooming through the trees and behind the trees, like there is a ape type like animal type thing right and by every instinct that i have it looks real it looks right. real it looks like this guy like actually recorded bigfoot um mm -hmm. but it doesn't go anywhere because it's like you know the media is never going to cover it and no one's ever going to cover it because it's like no this is probably fake and that's the world that we live in right now it's not even the future it's right now well sometimes even with like this ufo shit it's like i remember i saw this like clip as soon as like the it was like pov of like the ufo getting shot down and it's always dude 
I, I refuse to believe we live in a world where we have DSLR level cameras on our cell phones and we're still shooting video like we're apes. <laughs> like, yeah. it's just, it always baffles me. Like you have the best quality iPhones and Samsungs in the market and it's like you're still taking photos that look like just, it's like blurry, it's not in focus, or you like zoomed out and used the, the wrong lens. It's like, dude, you can't be this stupid. Like we cannot consistently be f***ing up this hard in trying to capture this footage. Are you guys familiar with uh, Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah. Nope. So there's a whole there's a whole TV series on this on um, on History Channel. And obviously it's a TV series, so, you know, they're amplifying shit, making shit as entertaining as possible. Like, it, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're exaggerating and hyping stuff up bigger than it is. But on that show, right. they've call, caught, you know, multiple times, like on camera, UFOs, things flying in the air middle of the day or or at night like just glowing straight up glowing like balls of light like up up in the sky and a, a bunch of other things mm -hmm. i know the producer uh of that show very well he actually lives near me and you know we've had multiple meetings with him we know him really well and uh you know he swears on everything in private like everything on that show is fucking a thousand percent like true real accurate it's a fucking mystery uh right. they 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 don't know if they're ever going to get to the bottom of it at one point the u.s government owned that ranch and they were doing their own investigations and they got drone uh, you know th they ended up selling the property because a lot of people got like you know, haunted or sick or, you know, harassed by the so-called aliens from another dimension and shit. Like there's, there's mm -hmm. so much stuff out there and there's so much evidence out there. You got, you know, medical or excuse me, um, military professionals that came out and I believe 2001 or 2000, the early 2000s, so many different uh, military um, people came out um, and told their stories of cases of UFOs. There was a case from the um, from the 50s or the 60s, I can't remember, where UFOs flew over our uh, nuclear silos and shut down all the nukes. You know, they, 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 they saw the craft, it was hovering over the nukes, and they shut them all down. And these what? nukes, their, their electronics and stuff aren't linked to each other. You know, they're, they're, they're not linked to each yeah, other they, they were like floppy drives and shit like they kept them separate yeah so for, for them to just go over and shut all them down there's been times where um they would fire do like a test fire which didn't actually have a nuke on it but they would do a test fire and um yeah you know, dummy payloads crafts would come up and disable the rocket like in mid-air um you know you got even stories from the 1800s everyone thinks this ufo stuff is like a new phenomenon it's not it is totally not. In the 1800s, there's a new article coming out of a small town in Texas. Um, I believe it's Texas. I could be wrong on that. Where, um, you know, a flying craft crashed in this little town. And it had a little spaceman from out of this world. And they buried it in the local cemetery. Um, and, you know, like, th these stories of, you know aliens and ufos and stuff have been around long before roswell everyone thinks roswell was the first case no um there's also been i mean it's well documented there was ufos flying over washington dc in i believe the 50s um which was seen by thousands and thousands of thousands of fucking people um so it's like before before we had all this fake stuff and deep fakes and whatnot, there's just so much evidence and so many stories of this well, type of stuff happening. Well, evidence or, like, accounts, because, like, evidence would be, like, a video or photograph that people would just have, you know? True. Or you're talking, like, accounts of this stuff happening, like, to people. Uh, yeah. Because I, I believe there's, like, listen, if well, you look photos. at even beyond the United States... Yeah, but then then you get into the idea of like how many of those photos are fucking doctored, right? And the thing is, it's like there is as many that you can tell me that are real. There's a lot of them that have come out lately that have proven to just be like you know, Fake. hoaxes. So it's it's tough to gauge what's true and what isn't. I do believe that there are accounts because the way that I look at this, right? Like it's not just the U.S. If you go beyond the U.S., like even if you go talk to like you know Indians and stuff like that too from back home. Like, they'll have their own UFO story. So will Russians, so will, like, Israelis, so will, like, fucking, you know, Brits, so will the Americans. It's like, when when people from around the world have this collective experience, 
right, before the era of the internet, that leads some believability. That this probably shit floating around. Now, the whole Skinwalker Ranch and, like, the U.S. government, whenever they get involved, you know what I think it is? I think it's them testing, like, in special aircraft or something. <laughs> and, like, you know, it's just the U.S. doing, like, you know, shady things. You know, that, that that's just where I get into. I don't necessarily always think that it's just going to be, like, an alien craft. I looked this up to get the correct information. 1952 Washington, D.C. UFO incident. Um, July 19th through July 20th, they were there. Mm -hmm. July 26th through July 27th, they were there. I, there were so many of them in the sky. And after the first report, even more people went to go look for them, and they all seen them. I don't know. Well, I have My complaints with a lot of these um, examples are... Like, when you mention, like, the ex-military type people talking, right? Like, those, there are a lot of ex-NASA employees that say that the moon landing was fake. Like, actually. And say that the Earth is flat. So, I, f I feel like a lot of... That's obviously a hoax, right? No, no one actually believes that stuff, unless you're Logan Paul for, like, a month, right? So, uh, no one believes that, but... I mean, can you prove the Earth isn't flat, though? Yeah, let's send it. Let's get a balloon, Muda. We'll do it together. <laughs> get a balloon. We'll float up there. Yeah, but so I mean, I mean, no, but like to be real, like who here genuinely has ever thought the Earth was flat, though? Like, you mean no. of the three see, of like, us? I see. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> no. like, you know what? You know what I think? I think the Earth flat shit is like a government psyop to make actual <laughs> conspiracy theorists look stupid. It oh, doesn't. Ironically, I believe it, that. It just literally does not make sense, right? Exactly. Because Gravity, when, when you learn about gravity, right? Gravity, mm -hmm. um, all objects with mass have some sort of right. gravity. Team like, is debunking flat earth yeah. on our podcast. You walking around, you have a certain gravity to you. Do like, I prove it? Prove it, Keem. Prove it. Gravity is still a theory. Yeah? Science has, already, science has already done that. But anyhow. It literally has not. It's just a proof. We have a theory based on the fact that um, you know the planets are orbiting the sun and the sun's a big mass. This is why I don't like you. You just like to hear your own voice. But to be fair, he's I not mean, wrong. It's the theory. I, I'm being completely honest with you right now. Yeah. You're not listening to what I'm saying. You said science proves it like that's uh, some sort of proof. Your source was trust me, bro. Look it up, bro. Yeah, it came from the National Center of, uh, of uh, Science Education. Gravity, it's only a theory. If you're basing all this, there's also a theory that the Earth is flat, so I don't know. Maybe it's a disc that's just flying upwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. Bro, you got that off Facebook. <laughs> He's not Nah, too dude, happy. think about it. Like, when you drop an apple and it hits the floor at 9.8 meters per second squared, mm. that velocity is just how fast the disc is moving up. Ever think about that? Well, okay. All right. Well, you mentioned a theory, but I'm gonna I'm gonna side with Keem and believe that gravity is in fact a real thing. I'm not gonna say that it isn't. Okay. We're not gonna we're not gonna Trisha, we're not gonna have a Trisha Paytas moment on the fucking podcast. Okay. That's not happening. But okay. Go ahead, Keem. Bring it on with the debunk the flat Earth <clears throat> with the theory of gravity. Gravity is, uh, you know, w w when something has a certain amount of mass, it just attracts more and more and more and more and more. And the longer throughout time, the shape would obviously be a circle, right? It would be a mm -hmm. circle. Um, when you roll, roll a snowball, right, on the ground and you're making a snowman, it goes in the form of a circle because more and more get attracted to it. And that is the, the ultimate shape in the center of the object has the strongest amount of gravity or whatnot. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just so obvious that the world is round. I don't okay. think a snowball is round because of gravity. Well... To be fair, now I think if you roll a snowball like you know off a fucking like hill or something, it it's not going to turn into a cylinder, no, right? No, because gonna... that that's just the easiest way for it to roll. It'll roll the lightest side is this the heaviest side of the snowball is what's going to roll next, right? So My point will... of saying that is when you're adding yeah. more and more and more snow, the shape that it takes is a circle. True. Okay. I don't think it's because of gravity. Although uh, gravity, globe, if gravity exists, then the world, the Earth, has to be round. Right? Yeah. Assuming gravity exists. Look, at the end of the day, I'm just going to say it right now. I don't think NASA deep faked the f***ing Earth when they went up to the goddamn moon and took a photo of it. So I'm just going to believe the Earth is f***ing round. <laughs> like, I'm not going to... Like, <laughs> like, at the end of the day, it's like, yes, we like I like conspiracies. I, as long as they're not, like, bro, dumb. You're in the Matrix, ones, like, flat bro. Earth. You're just in the and, Matrix. Like, yeah. Dude, I, dude, that... Okay, you look, side tangent, that Logan Paul fucking, like, piece of paper, we all saw that, right? Oh, was, yeah, he what, blocked me off that one. Okay, like, what drugs do you think he was on when he wrote that fucking proof for the Earth? The openworld.ai. Yeah. 
I don't. I remember seeing it, but I don't remember what argument he was trying to make. Uh oh, the Earth. It was a fucking. You know that how that time is cyclical and shit like yeah. that. All, it was just. It was like literally just that. And it was like, like it was like the, time the is world, infinity or something. The, there's a big bang. The world is created. The world keeps going. All the stars explode. There's a big bang. The world is created. Oh my God! It's a cycle. All that matters is where we are now. So basically, he be- watched an episode of Rick and Morty. <laughs> Basically, that was the conclusion. Yeah. High on Rick and Morty. Yeah, literally, he oh, just watched God. an episode of Rick yeah, and Morty. I started studying a lot that. about black holes and whatnot, and I think it's very possible that, like, the Big Bang, the Big Bang is, you know, us going through a black hole, and after it goes through a black hole, it comes to the smallest point, right? Because gravity is so fing strong. Once you pass through that black hole, boom. It explodes, right? Because there's no longer that gravity, um, you know, Pushing forcing it to the center. Um, yeah, but what well, was the thing right. that what went happens... through the black hole, though? Like, what existed to go through uh, the black hole? A previous u- universe, maybe, or something. And how did how did that get created by a big well, the, bang? Y- you know, you know the theory that there's multiple Cyclical, universes, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So when we see a. a a black hole in our universe, right? And there's stars being sucked through it and there's just all different types of stuff being sucked through it, right? On the other end of that black hole, my my personal thoughts on this is it's creating a new universe. Once you go through, you're in a new universe. As as far as we understand black holes, I think, um, black holes is just, uh, it's a a force of gravity so strong, um, nothing can escape it. Not even light can escape it, right? So everything that goes in there is crushed down to its smallest possible form of existence, and its mass becomes infinite because it becomes as small as possible. As far as we understand, there's no way through a black hole. It's not like a wormhole, as far as we know. Mm, that's been well, challenged. that's as far as we know, right? That's, that's as far as, like, as, as far, yeah. Right? No one's ever yeah. like gone into a black hole for. Yeah. No, when you say is, that's as far as we know, that's like one theory. That's not True. as far as we know. It's as far as that well, science is best guess. But you're right; there are many theories. Without yeah, for sure. No, I mean, like, listen. At the end of the day, like, and we're putting a lot of like thought into. <laughs> we're yeah. putting a lot of thought into the whole like black holes. We're putting a lot of thought into. We're putting more thought than like what the average YouTuber has like can ever. We're putting more thought like, into uh, black Logan holes Paul. than yeah. most YouTubers do. Yeah, when we're, we're, we're doing. We're doing more thinking NFTs. than. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing more than like Logan Paul. Actually, you know, speaking of Logan Paul, we talked about this before on the podcast. Who here's gotten their money back for Crypto Zoo yet? Yeah. No one uh, that I know as of. As far as we know, no, no one. So what's going on with that? Did he just like forget? Because <laughs> uh <laughs> So I think he's still standing sure on that. Hasn't. You know how he said like I will pay it back? Like they'll end up confronting him and I'll be like, "Bro, I will. I'm telling you, I will pay them back." Then 4 years so, later, it'll you told us before the podcast, you made like what, 45 million, Prime made 45 million bucks? In January. So Logan, in January. Logan's share should be more than enough to make things whole for fucking the crypto, what was crypto do, like a million, two million dollars max? Uh, I think. So I think between them, they, uh, what was it, like seven million? Between like Crypto yeah. King and Eddie Ibanez and all those gamers. Yeah. Um, don't you think that it would take time to for logan to actually do those refunds because there's a a lot of verification that needs to happen right you need to prove through your wallet that you did that you also need to prove your identity and who you are because now there's like an ongoing lawsuit and you wouldn't Mm -hmm. want people to double dip right (laughs) true yeah true there's a lot that he has to do to actually start that refund process now that i think about it like i think i think what's most important is like maybe not so much the refunds but he should show that there's like a team handling just that aspect right a now a team of criminals well, yeah he's got to have like a team of like actual like forensic accountants at this point like actually like looking through the blockchain and like verifying who's who to hand out that refund it's and you're right rough. there is a all lawsuit. of his forensic accountants are so busy doing um, community service they don't have the time I also don't even know if he can, like, handle a f***ing refund right now, considering the fact that, like, he is getting sued, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, like, a whole nother issue, right? In a way, I feel bad for him. In in a way, I feel bad for him. Obviously, Mm -hmm. he's dumb, right? And he got in business with the wrong people and whatnot. Uh, But in a way, he's also a victim, right? Um, But 
at the end of the day, he's the public figure. He's the one holding the bag. He's the one that has the responsibility to make this right, you know? And with him mm -hmm. just ignoring it until Coffeezilla Zillo calls him out, um, you know, that's on him. As much as I want to feel bad for Logan, though, like, this guy has had a fucking history with cryptocurrencies, man. It's not like his first day on the block, dude. Yeah, his like, first rodeo. And Dink Doink and all these other projects that he worked on before, like, they had, he has such a, like, this is the thing, like, if this was some rando influencer, like, the first time they ever did a cryptocurrency game, I wouldn't even take it as hard, because the whole making of CryptoZoo almost felt like, yeah, somebody wanted to make a game, they f***ed up, they didn't look at it right, and people got, the people lost their money, right? That's what I would look at it, but Logan has a history, he knows this market, he probably knows it better than most other influencers, period. If I was him, if I was him, in his scenario... And he's got that much money. He's making that much money off of Prime. I mean, somebody in here said that he made something like $45 million off of Prime yeah, in just one month. Why not just, look, refund everybody. Just refund everyone. You but know, does it make you look guilty, though, in the eyes like of the government? Like, if you just started giving money back, it's like, oh, so you know you did something wrong, so why are you giving the f***ing money back? Uh, That's maybe the issue, right? I, I don't think so. I think if you worked directly with the government and said, look, this is what happened. This is what's going on. How do I make this right? How do I make this whole? What do I need to do? You know, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I feel like there's got to be, like, Let's say he refunds everyone back. Then is there a crime? Is there like you know? Did he do something wrong then? You know, because I mean, if you make still it still technically financial fraud, right? In well, even if you pay back, you're still a thief. That's like that's like oh, I robbed the bank, but I felt guilty about it, so I gave the bank back all their money. I mean, yeah, you made them whole, but you still committed a crime. I, like the thing is, it's like the way that I know is like if you give the money back, it like definitely puts you in a lot of favor when you're getting prosecuted. But, like, you're still going to get hit with the initial act of a potential crime. That's the problem, right? Like, you'll never be able to wash that stink off. I, I, th I think our system's flawed, then. <laughs> you, think, you think it's flawed that we, like, okay. You should be able to make people whole and be like, yo, this went wrong. Here's your refund. Here's your, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. if you're able to give the refund and fix the, the problem that you or your company made, right, and make everything mm -hmm. whole... I don't think you should necessarily face punishment for that. Okay, fine. Forget Logan. Like, Logan may not have actually committed a crime because he might not be, like, he might not have actually done anything wrong on his own behalf. He might not even know that something was going wrong. Well, I mean, but that crypto unless you would guy, argue that um, influencing the market, like insider trading, mm -hmm. like, that that definitely happened from the chat logs. I mean, that that's a thing. Insider trading, that's a fucking, that, that's a good, like, isn't it like Nancy Pelosi or some shit that, like, ended up him, like she was playing the market for like years yeah. with insider knowledge. Like if she made the government whole, if she made everything whole again and gave back those proceeds, should we still not charge her for insider trading? Yeah. Because I think we should. I think that should want. I think anybody that caught anybody that gets caught doing a financial crime deserves like some severe punishment. Because it's like it's not just yeah, about making day, people whole. I think. Yeah, like, the thing is, you're also forgetting, like, okay, forget about the people you couldn't have made whole, right? Like, every time these crypto things happen, what's the first f***ing post you see in their reddits? The suicide hotline awareness f***ing page. That's there for a reason. Like, there's a lot of motherfuckers that I know that gamble their money or they f***ing buy into these crypto projects with all their life savings. And I'm not saying that's smart. Like, obviously, you're an idiot for doing that. But, like... If you're somebody that's following Logan Paul or an influencer or Nux or me or Keem, right? The, the thing that I always say is they will always look at what we have and think that because of what we're shilling, that's how we got here, right? Like if, if me and you were talking about, hey, here's this one crypto coin and we put $10,000 into it, right? 10 grand for me and you may not be the same for like, you know, the average guy who's working a fucking job every day, right? Like pushing carts or whatever. That's their whole savings. That's all the money they've ever had. They think because we're putting money in and we live in like nice houses and like have everything, that's how they're gonna reach the pathway to success. So like fucking these dudes, they put their money in, they lose it, and then like, what's their next step? They're not getting it back. I mean, yeah, but where, do, yeah. where, where, where does that end though? Cause it's like, you know, I collect like, old retro video games and i'm like you know oh. tweeting that out and whatnot someone might take their life savings and you know 
buy a fucking, you know, $10,000 like old video game or something or a sealed copy and then the market crashes and you get burned on that. I mean, there's just so where where does that influence end? That that's not financial advice though. And right. I don't mean in the in the cringy influencer way that like but it you know, is. what are you talking about? Absolutely not. You're telling them your hobby is not the same as you telling people to invest in this game that's going to make people money. Okay, let me give you an example right now. You got Ms. Kiff or whatever his name is. He bought an N64 like sealed uh, game and he was telling everyone how much he bought it for, what it's worth now, you know, how much money he's made. Um, That shit happens all the time. That's clearly financial advice. It's absolutely not financial advice. It's him talking about a hobby and something that, you know, he made money off something. Okay, cool. I that's think the difference totally is not it's like, that's advice. not And also, like he's that, not gaining from yeah. it. If you buy yeah. a Nintendo 64 off his advice, he doesn't make a penny. Okay, so wait. Logan Paul promoting Pokemon cards when he got into it and promoting it and the market, like, 10xing, he didn't, he didn't benefit from that? I don't know. At well, this point, I mean, not, he, he didn't sell, he, so no. Yeah, he wasn't like selling it. It, it wasn't all, like he it was trading. It all went back down. It crashed down it. so hard. He lost I, a ton think, of money on that. I think where the influence like ends is like the Pokemon cards and the fucking video games are not like actual like dollars. They're not stocks. You know, like they're not you know publicly traded markets that people are jumping into. It's just like hey, if you're like nobody buys a Pokemon card thinking that it's going to fucking ten x in value and they'll just sell it right. Like that that's really stupid. No, they like, do. The, they do all the time. Well, People is that do. is that the fault of the person pushing it, or is it the fault of like the fucking idiot buying it? You know, <laughs> it's like, um, yeah. yeah, like the, at what like at what point is like who whose fault is that though? In the end, like if, if we were like if we were just sitting here like judging people based on their actions, Kim, whose side would you be on? The guy promoting the card or the guy fucking buying it? <laughs> okay, but you can make that same argument, Muda, for um, the crypto NFTs, stuff too, yeah. right? I, I guess maybe it's the way. You know what? Actually, is a really good way to. Can look at it too so i'm kind of also on keem's side maybe we should prevent people from like raising speculative markets i don't know i'm just saying where does it end right where does it end where does the financial influence like wh- what is the- dude there's these videos on you know i'm i'm a corvette guy i own two corvettes i love like looking up corvette stuff old corvettes whatnot and like mm-hmm. the the C4, I believe, got really cheap in price a couple years ago. Like you could get a C4 Corvette for like, I don't know, like three grand or something, right? And mm-hmm. all these YouTubers were talking about it. They're like, yo, scoop these up. When you see these, scoop these up. They're gonna go up in value. And now they've all like 10 x right? And- Bro, what kind of financial level are you where you're treating supercars like NFTs? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the whole Just economy. That's bets. the whole world. Yeah. Like yeah. everything has a certain value, yeah. and people speculate whether it's going to go up or not. So that's why I'm like, where does it stop? You know. So like, you, you feel like you feel like okay, tomorrow if like you f-ing tweeted out pictures of the f-ing C8, and you, you you feel like you feel like that's a bit financial advicey almost, or like you're influencing people to like raise up the value on a Corvette. I think so much more stuff is financial advice than people like. Recognize. Give it credit for him. Yeah. Maybe financial yeah, I mean, influence. Uh. I think advice might isn't the right word. You're not particularly advising them with the intent to make money off their purchase. Unless you are. Like, yeah. I mean, unless you yeah. do uh, Elon Musk with Dogecoin. You know? Like, I guess that was financial are, advice. Like, do you think it's different? Like, okay, if you promoted, like, C8 Corvettes, like, ha now five of my friends are going to go buy Corvettes. All of a sudden, the price raises, and then let me sell my Corvette. Like, that, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a little f***ing different. Like, you hype yeah. up a Corvette, and I'm, like, buying a Corvette, but it's secretly from you or, like, a dealership you own or some shit? Maybe. It's just weird. I don't know, man. It's a, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird world we live in. But do you think, like, if Logan makes everyone whole, do you think he shouldn't get any like flack for it, any trouble? I don't think he should. No, if he went okay. through and made everyone whole, I don't think he should get in trouble. No. I mean, he did only uh-huh. make them whole because he got called out. I mean, at the end of the day, like, like it's it, better than nothing. <laughs> it's better than nothing, absolutely. Yeah. But still, it doesn't exactly yeah. paint the picture of a moral human right. being. Well, what do you think about Logan, though? Like, on a on a on a normal level, came like, what do you what do you think about the guy? <laughs> Smart. Um, I know. I know you and the Paul brothers have been like so fucking weird in like the last few years. Yeah, I don't well, know if you like Logan him or not. Hates my guts. Like, absolutely yeah. hates me. Like, I'm one of the people on his list. Like, me, The Rock, and some other people are like unforgivable in his eyes. What? Uh, 
So yeah, no. Why the rock? That's the difference between me and Logan, because Keem and I are homies. So, basically, uh, during the Suicide Forest and whatnot, uh, absolutely not Nux, during the Suicide Forest, uh, <laughs> The Rock and Logan Paul were, like, working on a, pro a film together or something, or were boys, and, like, The Rock was basically, like, Logan Paul's, like, hero, and... Uh, during the Suicide Forest thing, The Rock sends Logan a message and is like, yo, can you unfollow me, dude? Like, I just, you know, you got a lot going on right now. I need to distance myself from you. So Logan does it, totally understands, but he's been holding a grudge against The Rock, right? Bro. So le recently, you know, Logan Paul's obviously in the WWE, right? So The Rock congratulates yeah. him. Well, Logan does this interview on True Geordie, and he's basically like, I just... I'll never forgive him. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want anything to do with him. I, l I left him on red. Like, he's got these lists of people that I'll never forgive. He'll never forgive me because I brought up the, the suicide forest thing, like, years after. And there was a video where it sounded like he said the N-word. So I tweeted it out. And I said, did Logan just say the N-word? And he blocked me on Twitter. And I've been <laughs> in, I'm on the <laughs> list what now. What did you expect, though? I, I'm on the list for life. Oh, man, that is so funny. Well, it's still unclear whether or not he said the N-word or not in this clip, right? It sounds like he says the N-word with an A. So I just tried to like, did he say this or not, right? Oh, my God. So uh, now I'm on the list permanently. Uh... FaZe Banks was on uh, Impulsive recently. And Logan's like, why do you f with that scumbag Keemstar? And Banks is like, bro, that's my boy. He, you know, he's just so salty and so fucking mad. And, and the sad thing is is it's not personal with me like it's personal to him but like i've praised logan paul so much when he does good i'm saying good stuff about him when he does bad i'm saying bad stuff about him like there's so many other people that have really fucked logan up right like bad yeah. and that hate his guts and that are really trying to destroy logan paul right and those people aren't on the list but i am i'm 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 the worst of the worst so well, i think you might be on the list because he's like really trying to have like that clean brand you know he's like i can't you know hang out well, with anyone that controversial and stuff to like answer that. your question what i think of logan paul i think logan paul is a walking talking commercial right logan paul always just seems fake thank you thank you that's fake. all it's Twitter feed is <laughs> you know when Logan uh, Paul is on impulsive and he's like you know saying literally anything you're looking at an actor you're looking at an actor uh, yeah. when Logan Paul um, is sitting there saying like Harry Styles should be able to wear a dress and Harry Styles you know is a real man for wearing a dress when he's saying that stuff it's a performative convincing argument of the time which was a couple years ago when wokeness was a big thing all right just recently before this crypto thing happened where he was getting exposed by coffeezilla logan paul was you know saying some real edgy stuff about aiden ross and andrew tate potentially being fucking gay like making gay jokes about the two of them um you wouldn't have seen that two years ago from logan paul but because Recently, the, the internet's been, in, been getting a little bit more edgy and the woke stuff has been not popular as it was before, right? He starts moving into that trend, right? So, like, the, these two incidents of Harry Styles is a real man for wearing a dress and then him joking about freaking Aiden Ross and Andrew Tate having sex together and making a gay joke, right, two years from each other is a reference to the times. Like, Logan Paul is constantly uh staying in tune with trends and he's being performative in every aspect of him communicating online he's a walking talking uh commercial in my opinion Yo, what part of, what part of that is different though like with what what well, like hold on wait a minute do you, like to be completely real with you how can we like prove that aiden and andrew didn't like that was the weirdest shit that i've ever seen oh we're uh Andrew, where yeah. uh, Aiden Ross was like sniffing his chair and shit. <laughs> Bro, they were fucking, dude. I'm not even pretending on that one. Well, if you don't really know that much about Aiden Ross, Aiden Ross is like gimmick a, yeah. is to be sus, right? And by sus, like, you know, yeah, act like he's gay. Yeah, all the sus compilations, like whenever he's around like his friends, he just has some gay stuff and then they're like, yeah. what? Like, that's, so that's he's playing up that character and that's, yeah. that's kind of the... 
Ooh. What do you think what of do you Aiden think Ross of... streaming the Super Bowl? Yeah, wait, dude, wait, hold on, wait, wait. Actually, before the Super Bowl, you, we, you know, kick. We all know kick. Crane Rex's platform. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys hear the fucking rumor that he got 150 million bucks for that? I heard that rumor. So, in my opinion, um, I don't think that that amount of money is for him to stream on kick. I think like half of it is for him streaming on kick, and I think the other half is him promoting. Uh, like steak. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know what the truth is. Well, we know that fucking Kick has back money like seeded in from steak. Like it's it's yeah. connected pretty hard. And like uh, I was recently hearing like Train Rex was gonna like fucking do a podcast or some shit with Drake, which makes more sense considering Drake is in bed with like steak. steak. So it's like all you know. It, obviously, if you if you if you know the history, you know that everything intermingles. And clearly, with stake, they've got just this like endless supply of money being flooded in. Well, if so. it, if Kick offers me like a stream deal, right, and the mm -hmm. seven figures, yeah. I'm gonna stream there. Like I'm going to stream there. I know s there's a lot of criticism that like, well, stakes involved with um, you know Kick. Oh, s oh well, like you you know what do you. What, what what are we talking about? Like all these platforms. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's a sin to stream on Kick because they're financed by stake necessarily. No, but that was the issue. messaging that was happening a couple months ago, and I'm like, dude, it's not a sin to to take a stream deal and go over to Kick. It's like, dude, you have companies that will sponsor, um, you know, all different types of YouTubers, and you don't know where that money's coming from. You know, like yeah. if you have a technology company that's sponsoring a YouTuber and they're promoting it and they're getting like a hundred K to promote like the new Samsung or whatever, right? Yeah. Aren't phones made with like child labor or, you know, slave labor well, or yeah. also that, but the companies that make the phones are also involved with the military making like weapons and shit too. So it's like, but, but this is my <laughs> point, right? Yeah. There's, yeah. You know, uh, it, well, like, my thing is, like, as long as you're not promoting the gambling, like, the illicit, like, gambling side, it's like, whatever. It's just the company, like, trying to make a different branch. It's like, I think for a streamer, like, if they're getting paid a bag to stream, just stream. Like, they don't have to promote the company, like, politics or the company's, like, other deals. It's fine. Like, go for it, you know? When we're talking about money, right? You know, Big Joe on TikTok said it best. He's like, you know, there's no such thing as bad money or good money. It's just money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, the Aiden Ross going to kick shit, like, that deal, like, pe people have, like, said, like, the, the rumor, like, 150 is too high. I think it's, I think it's about right. I think given the fact that Aiden is not a small streamer. Yeah. Um, that sounds Like, accurate. when he, dude, he went over to, he went over to the Super Bowl. Like, he started streaming the Super Bowl, and people are like, they're paying him more than, like, an NBA fucking, like, player. Okay. I'm like, he's probably going to make them more than NBA money if he's, if they're giving him 150. Can, can right? I talk to the audience for a second? All right. Sure. If you think that $150 million for Aiden Ross to go stream on a platform is too much money and it's insane and it's out of this fucking world, then you have no understanding of the world in which we live in. There are people on cable news right now that are pulling 80,000 viewers. That's it, right? And they're getting 20 million fucking dollars a year. And the audience isn't even there. They're online. And when you're talking mm -hmm. about sports figures, who is taking the money? Who's who's dipping their toes in the money? You got the the actual organization, all the employees to operate it. Like there's so much shit that like needs to be taken out from all the money being made. Where's the overhead in a fucking stream? There ain't that much overhead. You know what I mean? It's like wildly fucking different. All right. So it's like this money is not not like out of this world crazy this money is on par of what it should be joe rogan got a hundred million dollars because he was worth a hundred million dollars these are the correct figures this is actually what this shit is worth mm -hmm. like as much as you want to hit like hate on aiden ross like i think aiden ross is a an idiot personally like the way that he acts and shit however he's definitely a far like the super bowl like that he streamed on fucking, like kick what was it like a hundred thousand? Fuck, he had like XQC yeah, like numbers and he was streaming viewers. like those. Yeah, which, dude, again, it's like, how the f was he streaming the Super Bowl? Like, he hasn't, they haven't gotten a fucking lawsuit, they haven't gotten shit, so what did like kick also get the rights to stream no, the no, fucking I, Super there's Bowl? There's no way, there's no way they got the rights. I think it, well, we'll see if it flies under the radar. Well, Who if knows? you operate, if you operate in a country that doesn't have like copyright law, I mean, 
dude, we see this all the time. There's like all different types of streaming platforms online mm -hmm. that operate in these like third world countries and whatnot, where there isn't copyright law, there isn't enforcement, mm -hmm. and they just pirate American stuff and rebroadcast it. Well, no, where it gets different is you can't sue the company because they're in parts, but if you're an American streamer and you are living in America doing it, you'll get hit. I think it's like the in so I you're think saying the streamer like, will get sued. Yeah, the yeah. streamer gets sued because they're from America, He's so you're actually on violating a massive it. Massive commercial yeah. level. Because like, obviously, we all know Aiden Ross is American. He's not being Russian. No. <laughs> Where the f is he going to be right now? Is he going to be in his house in Los Angeles, or is he going to be in like fucking like New Delhi right now? But so it's like. You know that he's in the U.S. streaming. They're not going to serve the they're not going to serve Kick because I think Kick is like Australian or some shit. They're probably going to go after him because he's the one that primarily did it. Why would he do that? That's is he that dumb? <laughs> Dude, this is the thing with like Aiden Ross. It's like I don't think I, it's like it's like Speed. Like I I I watch some of Speed's content. Like lately, he like fucking was deep frying in his like bedroom, and I'm like <laughs> I'm like bro. Like, okay, maybe, this is like us being like old. Maybe we're like fucking like super old boomers now, but I'm not going to fucking put a deep fryer on my like fucking table here and just start deep frying and like overflowing and shit in my room. See, I think Speed like, but, hopes to but put it's the like, bed on fire. He but, wants the viral <laughs> clip. Yeah, it, exactly, true. but that's what that's what makes him so brilliant. Because like, there's very yeah. few people that are actually gonna do some crazy shit, blow off fireworks in your bedroom and stuff like that. There's very few mm -hmm. people that are actually gonna fucking do that, and the the reward to doing something like that is millions and millions of dollars. You know, this guy's building a yeah. crazy fucking brand, and those people that are like, oh, he's an idiot. Da, 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 da. That's like saying jackass in the jackass movies. The, oh, they're idiots. They're hurting each mm -hmm. other. They're doing dangerous stuff. You know what I mean? It's like at the end of the day, they're fucking entertainers and they're doing the crazy shit for people's well, fucking entertainment. That's where that's sort of the thing is like I question. I'm like either these guys are complete fucking idiots or they're like really young and they just they're smart. This is like a separate like staging house that they have to like film content yeah. in. Speed's bedroom is probably like some fucking box that's like secured. So if something really does go wrong, he cuts the stream and people run in and like fucking you know like extinguish all that shit. Dude, I don't know. Honestly, who knows? Maybe Aiden Ross had a deal with the NFL too because I know the NFL really wants to get. You know, like uh, you know, Jitty and some young people watching Aiden and Ross. Like, there's certain guys mm -hmm. in the WL community um, that, like, they the the NFL really fucks with hard. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe he did get permission. Who knows? Um, I feel like if he would have gotten permission, he would have said he got permission. It would be so. It would be so bad press, though. Uh, real quick, it would be bad press if the NFL did go after Aiden Ross because, like, that mm -hmm. is like kind of like their core demographic. You know? Well, like, even if they, like, the thing is, I don't think they necessarily care too much about the bad press, but I think it's also a marketing stunt, too. Like, like a day before, Aiden Ross is like, bro, they're silencing me on Twitch. Yeah, that was, <laughs> of course. And then, like, yeah, I, dude, I'm, really the I'm next wondering... Day. I'm wondering, like, oh shit, did he say something that's getting him removed? Is he getting departnered? No, bro, it was just him going to kick to stream the fucking Super Bowl that he probably didn't have the rights to at Twitch. Because I guarantee you, like, he probably talked to the guys over Twitch, like, yo, guys, the Super Bowl's going on. I want to stream it. And they're like, listen, Aiden, streaming a fucking movie from, like, 10 years ago is, is different than the fucking act of Super Bowl. It's always, so, it's always the uh, same pitch, though, right? When you move to a yeah. different platform from the one that you're currently successful on the yeah. pitch is always like i can't say what i want i can't do this i can't do that yeah. like i gotta go to this other platform so you can get the real me so so i can so i can drop real knowledge on you they're censoring me they're silencing me for the like it's always the same fucking pitch and in a way it's true it is true, though. What, you're talking about, like, Sneeko or something getting banned off YouTube and going to fucking Rumble and shit? I'm talking about every every person that moves platforms. Bro, when Ninja mm -hmm. went over to Mixer, it was like, I'm going to be able to do this that I can't do on Twitch. When uh, Twitch streamers go over to YouTube, I'm going to be able to do this on YouTube where I can't do on Twitch. It's like, well, it, obviously, it's... you have to sell the reason why you're moving to your audience. You have to make yeah. believe to your audience that it's making the content better, yeah. not because you're getting a huge bag. Yeah. Right? At the end of the day, they have to kind of try and sell that mentality that yeah, this is like, for them, guys. Yeah, right? no, nobody's going to 
fucking be so enthusiastic to go. It's like, yeah, guys, I'm switching platforms and inconveniencing you, but hey, I'm making fifty million dollars, so like, suck my fucking dick. Right. Switch over and follow me. I was really hoping <laughs> Oompa was gonna be here, uh, or. Is that his name? Is, am I saying that right? Yeah, Caleb. Yeah. Yep. I was really hoping he was going to be here because I want to talk to him about influencer boxing. I feel like he could get into that influencer boxing stuff. Bro, he could wipe the floor with some of the people out there. That That's what I'm is saying. <laughs> I want to talk to him you about getting involved. <laughs> Tell him to hit me up. Like, I want to get him involved in this influencer boxing space. You know, we're doing big stuff over at Happy Punch. Are you going to Creator Clash this uh, April? I won't be. I won't be. I no. uh, I, li I like their events. I think Idubs and his wife are making a great event. I mean, obviously, yeah. I have my criticisms, um, like anyone. Yeah. And whenever I express those criticisms, they cry like babies and act like they're being attacked, and I'm trying to cancel them, which is, uh, you know, really strange from coming from uh, those two. Uh, but uh, no, I, I I won't be going, but I'll mm -hmm. definitely be supporting it. I I like the show that they're putting on. I like what they're doing. Okay. Yeah, like the 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 weird thing I remember is like, fucking, I I just I find it so weird because it's like I remember when like I heard Idub saying he doesn't like to promote it using drama, and I'm like, wasn't the original like Creator Clash promoted by like shitting on a rice gum or something? Like, no, they starting that beef. No, but here's the here's the thing, right? They're like, we we're not gonna prov promote our event by doing drama. There's already enough drama. We're physically fighting each other, right? And in mm -hmm. the same breath, he was promoting his event by talking shit about all the other events and all the other promotions. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait, but you are doing that. Yeah. So yeah. it was like a huge hypocritical moment. Um, look, at, at the end of the day, I like what they're doing. I want to support what they're doing. I, I won't go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do I really want to say? Are you are you not going because you don't want to go, or are you not going because they won't allow you to come, or is it like? No, they'll definitely. I know that, they'll allow me to go. Okay. They'll allow me to go. I thought it was like a Sam Hyde situation. Like I remember when he like bought tickets or something, and they got like auto refunded because they don't want Sam at the event. I mean, I know I, you have Sam. I on talked your to Idub's roster. wife, um, maybe like once a month. Like we're we're on talking terms. I don't really talk to to Idubs himself. I mean, I'm sure. There has been a couple of messages back and forth throughout the years, yeah. um, but I more talked to his wife, and you know, given them advice and and what they want to do. But they also get like bent out of fucking shape over the littlest shit. Like, you know, Sam Hyde will be talking shit about Idubs' wife, and I'll report on it, and they'll take it as like I'm personally attacking them. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> Like it's I so, mean, to be to be fair though, he's under your roster, so like I know, but I'm fuck? not I'm not personally attacking you. Like I'm reporting on drama that's happening, right? Yeah, like I guess I guess from his perspective, it's almost like how H three always tries to throw you under the bus whenever he can. It's like he's not personally attacking per se. He's just talking about some bad thing in the no. news. No, 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 no. He personally. Attack what are you saying? Oh, no, he absolutely personally attacks you. Absolutely. Without yeah, but I, what I'm saying is, like, when, when these incidents are happening, I'm reporting Sam Hyde said this. I'm not saying mm -hmm. Sam Hyde said this and I agree with him. You know what I mean? I'm not putting forth any fucking personal opinion. I don't know. They get super offended all the time over every little fucking thing. Uh, they need to lighten up, um, you know, and um, just, just, you know, focus on their stuff because they have a really, really good brand and product and um yeah. it's going places like people f yeah. with it i f with it you know uh stop getting salty over every little fucking thing you know you're gonna get criticism you know you're you're doing things that are different than everyone else people are gonna say oh i don't like that or i don't agree with that you know but especially when the person is overall like myself giving you an overall good review and there's slight criticisms here yeah. and there take a fucking chill pill not everything is a personal fucking attack against you i think it's wild seeing you talk so positively about somebody that's like fucking been on your like just somebody that you're not on good terms with you like it used to be like years ago or like or even now like fucking with nux it's like when somebody wrongs came and you're making like a personal mission to like shit on their fucking mouth till the end of time yeah, well i mean that's what makes it Kim and i are actually yeah. friends while Kim and i does actually hate each other i've kind of moved from uh being keem star the youtuber and entertainer who you know makes content and i'm more mm -hmm. in like a 
you know, I'm older now and I'm, I was supposed to retire last March. We're coming up on a year when I was supposed to retire. And I kind of, in a way did retire. Cause what I'm doing behind the scenes now is like building up fighters and, and happy punch and setting up boxing matches, uh, mm -hmm. working with new talent and, you know, managing them and helping them in their careers. Like uh, what I've done now, uh, and over the last like year is really focused on building up other creators, giving them advice, giving them my knowledge and what I've learned through this experience, you know, being a content creator for fucking 10 yeah. years and whatnot. So it's like, I don't really have the same, like, um, someone's talking shit. It's time to respond. It's time to shit on them. You know, it's just, that's kind of gone now. Well, I think, uh, one of the more important things about it too, is I'm going to bring you back out of retirement, but I'm going to talk about somebody that's been in the game as long as you, one that's coming to my attention recently. You remember DSP Gaming? Dude, oh God. that goddamn moron. <laughs> Thank you. Bro, I saw a clip of him last night. Dude, okay, this guy is the wild. So you made like a React channel and like everything imaginable. And this is the same guy that's like, I'm not going to play Minecraft because babies play. Proceeds to play fucking Minecraft. I'm not going to talk about drama because drama, but like conveniently you know just gets into whatever spat he wants yeah and then now he's like into react channels and everything it's dude his whole story is so fucking so i've been reading up on this motherfucker and it's like the dude had like a straight up gambling addiction to like this one fucking game wwe or something it was some mobile crap right like some gotcha shit and like the dude is literally like hundreds of thousands of dollars gone down the fucking drain like mm -hmm. just insane and, and it's like i've never seen somebody so leechy off their fan base like every day that it's i so see bad. this guy go up on stream it's like 200 viewers average and it's always like hey guys i'm not seeing my fucking tip skull rise okay y'all gotta y'all better fucking make this money go it's like literally just financial domination like the dude is not a gaming streamer it's a financial dominant streamer and it's like what is the mm -hmm. end goal there? Like, I just don't get it. Because it's like, you had this whole podcast idea with them. Him, um, Wings, and Boogie, right? And you gave them each, like, a 50... Or offered a 50k signing bonus. No one took you up on it. Yeah, let me... Can I, can I talk about that for a little bit? Yeah. So, a quick backstory um, about DSP to, to add more to it is... This guy, for years and years and years, has hit his fans with, I I'm not gonna be able to pay rent, guys. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I really need your help. I'm like, I'm clocking into work. Obviously, you guys don't like the Paper Mario, so we're doing Sonic Legends today. And like, you know, it's like, it's like, just, <laughs> just like Mutahar said, right? This <laughs> guy, all right, is like the biggest leech on the internet, right? 100%. And oh, yeah. Recently, uh, I want to say like maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, he started talking shit about me, like just out of the blue. Someone mentioned Keemstar in his chat, right? And he just goes on this rant. I don't like Keemstar. He does nothing but this drama chef and he's bad and just drama this and drama that. And I'm like, I, do, I barely even know this guy. So I start like going through the drama archives to figure out like, did I ever talk about him on drama? Why is he so mad at me? Right. And sure enough, there was no. this incident where he left his kid stream on and he was beating his. <laughs> and oh it my went, God. And it went viral. Right. Wait, like, Nux, have you I seen that? See you that? saw that, right? What brother? Okay. So, I'm a, so okay. I'm going to give, I'm going to paint the picture for you without playing the video. So this game Neo came out, you know, Neo, right? Yeah. And Dark Souls. Okay. So this is like he he's starting up a stream, right? And like he puts the camera on, like the camera's still on OBS, and he's just like sitting there beating his meat off. And at one point, his head literally goes back like this, like chasms and shit, and like looks at the OBS screen, and he notices the camera's on, and that's it. Like he fucking literally like jerked himself. And off he was on doing toys. this. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, <laughs> like. He went oh super fucking saiyan when that, he came, honestly, dude. No that's, joke. That's almost as sad as the quartering peeing in his basement. And that's that, up there. That's and one then of the greats. It, it really appeared, and he, of course you don't know, but it appeared like there was no cleanup either, which is... Ugh. No, no. Yeah, he grabs the fucking controller, and it's like, all right, let's get to gaming. It's like... like what what oh happened? Did you just, God. like... <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you just blow a load like <laughs> under your desk, like on the bottom yeah. of your desk, and just leave it there? Like, what is happening? Dude, that triggered so much anxiety for me because I'm like, how many times have I went over to some like disgusting gamer house and grabbed the PlayStation controller, not knowing? <laughs> so, so anyhow, to, to go back to the story, so the, I the reported... hard spots in the carpet mean something else now. Yeah, I reported that story at the time that it happened, and you know, this is the heyday of drama on oh. YouTube, so it gets like two million views or something. That's the most mm -hmm. publicity this guy's ever gotten his fucking career and it's for him like leaving a stream on and beating his meat right so he's mad at me so <laughs> i send him a twitter video right and you know he's talking all this shit saying that i'm a loser and all that i'm like i'm a fucking loser i'm like bro we are the same age all right like if you think this is of the level one talk yeah, yeah, i, yeah, I give him the level one talk right <laughs> i'm like look i'm gonna retire this year like i'm done like i never have to fucking work ever again mm -hmm. but you're still begging money every single stream to pay your electric to pay your gas to pay your water bill to pay your rent i go like in the terms of gaming dsp I have beaten the game. I'm done with it. You're still on level one. You're still on level one, right? So Bro, I was trying to give him, him. A, I was trying to give him a pep talk to stop this streaming shit and go get a real job because he's not making it here, right? So that went back and forth. He blocked me. Da 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 da. A couple months go by, and I start really thinking about this. I'm like, there's a whole economy of people that make videos on DSP, right? Like if you go search up DSP, good luck finding his channel. You're gonna find people making fun of him. That's all you're gonna find. Like there's a whole economy based on clipping him and making fun of him. Same thing with Wings of Redemption. Same thing with Boogie, pretty much. All of them are in financial hardships. They all need money. Um, they're lol cows, right? So I had this idea, I was like, okay, I know a thing or two about podcast. Why don't I launch a new podcast? I'll own 25% of the brand. DSP will own 25% of the brand. Wings will own 25% of the brand. And Boogie will own 25% of the brand. I won't be a host, but I'll just run shit behind the scenes and I'll finance this and I'll call it the Low Cow Podcast. Imagine if you had wings of redemption dsp and boogie 2988 the crazy fucking takes you in here on an hour fucking podcast once yeah. a week you would tune in to see what the fuck is happening plus you have all these fucking haters and the little fans that they have they're tuning in to watch this this would be a fucking success and i guarantee for the first year yeah. that this podcast would be out that each one of them would make 50 thousand dollars i hit up wings of redemption and he's like i am down i hit up boogie 2988 and he's like i'm down i hit up dsp and he goes uh i'll get back to you on that so that's that's so insane because like okay so again going to the haters argument the thing that would make that podcast super successful is the same reason why andrew tate and like joe rogan are really successful is because you see clips of them everywhere <laughs> You could imagine. Imagine if you asked DSP about his thoughts on, like, the f***ing Russian-Ukrainian crisis. Bro, he'd say some of the wildest shit you could imagine, and that would have been clipped and trending all over TikTok and exactly. shorts. Exactly. And people would be jumping in to watch that. It's insane why he didn't jump into that exactly. idea. Exactly. So I'm able to get on the phone with Boogie, talk to Wings for Redemption, all right? Mm -hmm. And i am got this, like, uh, I'll talk to you later about this from DSP. Over the course of, like, a month... We're playing phone tag. We have agreed times where we're gonna get on the phone. I get on the phone with him. He's like, I'm at work right now. I'm streaming. Like, you know, like. <laughs> I'm at work right now. Dude, I'm, so, I'm so baffled what's happening. So I, I would tune into his streams and he's like, guys, I can't pay rent this month. We need to get the donations up. And I can't believe I, guys, I really need your help this month. Like he's going into the bagging where I'm about to give him 50, grand well he won't have to bag anymore he could just stream i'm about to give him well, fifty thousand well, uh, dollars okay so in, in in the dsp like a uh, rebuttal i'm gonna state this just to just because he's not here and this is based on his phrasing he didn't want your money because he believes it to be blood money made off of drama farming which is oh hilarious God, by the dude. way hilarious by the way given who he is um the other big boon uh the other big like thing about it shit i'm trying to that first bombshell is so fucking massive um he 
Yeah, no, you, you just have blood money off of fucking drama for me. You gotta, like, really remember the other piece. Jesus Christ. It's like, it escaped my mind. But that was one of the things. What I realized through this process is that DSP doesn't necessarily want money. He doesn't necessarily want a bunch of money, all right? What he wants to maintain is this small audience and him begging for money. Like, he is in the system where it's like a, a couple weeks, like, hey, the donations are down and da 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 Like, they, he's addicted to this, to the begging for money, to the uploading the videos with the, with the sad stories and, you know, like... He mm. he's caught in a fucking mental loop of being a victim of the the haters and the people coming after him and attacking him and like it's weird. If you went up to that dude and said, "Hey, I'll give you fucking fifty grand right now," you, you know what's you, all you have to do is yeah. stop streaming and go get a real job. He would say no. He wow. would actually say no, but, even though that yeah. fifty thousand dollars. Let's make it a hundred thousand dollars. Even though that hundred thousand dollars would take care of him for three years, right? Where he'd be able to save money and you know get a real job, and you know, even though that was would be the case, he would say no. The the thing with DSP, and now that I'm fucking remembering it pretty well, when you gave him the level one talk, there was an entire clip on his, like, he made a whole podcast, by the way. Podcast being, like, him talking to the camera okay. for, like, an hour and a half. So it's not really a podcast. It's just whatever. <laughs> he called it the level one podcast. And he's like, Kim, you look... <laughs> Kim, you look down on people. People who haven't been successful and made millions of dollars. And it's like, no, dumbass, you do the same thing. You look down on other people for, like, not being as hardworking of a streamer like you, too. It's like, I have never seen somebody take, like, that so wrong. Because it's like, listen, at the end of the day, like, you're right. Like, if he hasn't done shit now at his age through YouTube, he's just a f idiot. Because yeah. he's made enough money to have done something. Yeah, I'm Except roasting him, but I'm roasting him, but I'm also giving him advice. You know, I, I, I'm roasting him saying you're still at level one in this game of life, right? And mm. we're the same age and like I'm I beat the game, right? I'm roasting him, making fun of him, but I'm also giving him advice. Like, why do you keep doing the same thing? Why do you just like restart the level? And hey, guys, I need money to pay my water bill. Like, why why are you playing level yeah. one over and over again? This ain't working. Move on to level two and do something else to try to find some success. Go get a job at Home Depot or something, and then do the streaming thing as for fun for extra side cash. Dude, dude, it's it's hilarious when you say extra side cash because there's one. So like his haters, he's made so many haters now that some of them have become like certified like CPA accountants. No joke. Like I'm not even f***ing with you on this one. They have tabulated every single penny that this dude has made per year. Bro makes six figures a year, and he's still in like the worst financial shape I've ever seen. Like this is not like somebody oh my who's like God. No, dude, like this is I, somebody I that's financially. I just hear the tidbits from this podcast. Dude, oh my he bro, he he filed bankruptcy. He filed bankruptcy, and um, I don't know a lot of details about it, but it, it's in reference to something that Muta already said. It was something about him spending thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. on fucking skins in like a wrestling game or something. Like how fucked up in yeah. the head are you, right? That you're sitting there begging to get your rent paid for and you're blowing all your money on fucking skins in a fucking well, like, video game. He, uh, he, his like credit is shit now cause he, he got his credit card debt like forgiven in the bankruptcy filing, but like, Obviously, he's never going to have a good credit score the rest of his life. And, like, unless you have a shit ton of, like, cash, like, that negates that, he doesn't obviously have that. He's kind of, like, screwed going forward. This is, like, somebody that's, like, listen, they're just making the hill harder to climb, you know? Like, they're kind of doing it. They're climbing day by day. But at some point, it's going to get too hard to fucking climb, and it's all crashing down. And he has, like, no safety in it around it, which is just, like... Like, and any time you try to give the guy a bit of advice, it's just angry. It's just like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an idiot. He looks down on you. Like, no, dumbass. Like, this is just realistic life advice that people are giving to you. In yeah. five years, you won't be able to do this, all right? Like, you're already hitting the... It's like, it's like with Boogie, right? Like, when Boogie's like, I threw all my money into crypto, I'm like, bro, you're not, like, 20. You're not, you're not young anymore. You can't be doing these... And gambles no. and then screwing yourself down into a hole. But, like, you but see, he just tweeted yesterday, yeah. like a whole "eat the rich" tweet. 
He's like, Who? Uh, Boogie. He had a, he had a wild it. take. He's like, all billionaires have to be evil because I was never even close to becoming a billionaire. But, <laughs> oh but as much God. criticism that you might give Boogie or Wings of Redemption, like, DSP is worse. He's far worse Objectively, than Objectively, yeah. Like, it, when you talk to Wings or Boogie about, like, uh, an opportunity where they can make money, they're ears open like what okay i'm interested you know what i mean when you talk to dsp it's like no like you know what i mean like blood it's, money it's, bro it's different it's it's yeah. different uh sorry to am i cutting this short i don't know how long this is no this is about the right time no. oh okay perfect no, I, right time. me and i got a date with my girlfriend we're going on the atv trails to clean up all the sticks that have fallen through winter it's like 60 here. It's nice, so we want to get out Damn, and get dude, some sun. You're doing some fucking, you're doing some, uh, you know, environmental work? Shit, Some nice. manual labor on the property. Hell wow, yeah. Dude. This is after he's done looking down on the fucking plebs and level ones in society. <laughs> well, you know, I, I do want to, I do definitely, I gotta, I gotta head out too. So we're going to kind of end it. I think we had a healthy discussion about aliens all the way up to like, an alien of YouTube, really. So How speak, weird yes, is it alien. that my idea of like recreation is going and doing physical labor, <laughs> like like doing yard Bro, work? I feel a lot of people that are depressed on the internet. If they went out and just did some physical shit, they would be a lot happier. Bro, I'll be real. Like I, I have a smile on my face when I'm out there mowing my fucking lawn or doing yep. like the most basic. It's shit like in the so world. good. You feel so good going outside and doing yeah. work. Like it just. Uh, anyway. I, had a, I had a buddy who's like, "Why don't you get like a landscaper?" I'm like, "Why? <laughs> I'll do it myself, dude." It's oh, whatever. I get that criticism all the time. People are shocked yeah, I mow like, my own lawn. I'm like, "What?" It's like, "What? Yeah, why? Why don't you?" It's fun. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you want to check out, you know, Nux, check out his channel. If you want to check out Keemstar, uh, should I? Should we link? Drama you alert is uh, available on Snapchat daily. Uh, we just had a big okay. story that we came out with today surrounding Andrew Tate. Apparently, there's new evidence of, uh, you know, that the alleged victims the, were the, setting the, him the, up. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, every day wow. we come out with Snapchat. Uh, I think we're going to Twitter soon once we get into that uh, partnership program. So uh, the videos on Drummer will be over there. Of course, we got Happy Punch. We have our first event, the middle of May, a uh, big boxing event coming up. I want to get more influencers involved. Your co-host, Upa, or whatever his name is, I really want him involved. Uh, so I'm going to hit up him. Uh, you guys should encourage him to box because I think he'd be great at it. Um, yeah, kill a man. That's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining. If you Always wanted... a pleasure. Yep. Yeah, and you if you... Uh... <laughs> Dude, you guys are going to be the best friends. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for tuning in. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. We are out.